So generally, limiters are seen as an end-of-chain mastering device, and sometimes they're used for squashing sounds when we use heavy compression with high ratios that ultimately become limiters. But within a Yoro rack system, with this DPW Limit L1 module, we can be creative with limiters in terms of limiting beats, individual sounds, pulling up trails within effects. There's a ton of potential uses for this. We can even use it DC coupled, mixing in LFOs with our signals for some asymmetrical clipping, which sounds like PWM over any waveform that we put into it. So let's check out a bit of what's to come before we dive into the limit. So the limit is an ultra simple 6HP module from DPW. We have an input and an output three times over, a limit level, effectively a gain knob for each of these limiters, an AC-DC switch, which will AC or DC couple the behavior of channels one and two, and there's a jumper on the back for AC or DC coupling channel three. Now to put this really simply, AC is alternating current, and we generally expect that to be audio. DC would be direct current, and this could be a standing offset, such as just a one volt signal that just holds, it doesn't alternate, or it could be sub audio CV as well. And in that DC mode, we can be quite creative mixing LFOs with audio to create PWM like effects and this asymmetrical clipping as the DC signal, say an LFO, mixes with, say, an audio wave. So let's get into some patches. So to start with, we have quite a busy patch, but there's not as much going on as this cable spaghetti may suggest. Have four drum sounds coming from these proc modules into this Ma mixer. These are being mixed together alongside this kind of detuned bass type sound. And the whole mix is simply coming into the limit, the L1. Now with the level set quite low, and I'm just coming into channel one and out of channel one currently, we're going into data just for a nice little visual. And that's what I'm recording. Below 12 o'clock, there's not much limiting and it's fairly clean sounding, as you can hear. But listen, as I turn it up, that kick's probably going to be the first thing we notice starts to square off. The tail in that kick's being brought up, there's seemingly more low end, much fuller, much fatter sounding. And then up full, that snare starts to snap that bit more and the top end feels a bit more crunchy. Now, if we were really wanting to distort this and push the effect much further, we could chain the channels and I've already done that. This is my output to the scope. Output one is chained down to two and output two is chained down to channel three. So I'll first come out of channel two. Much more drive, more aggressive compression limiting. So now channels one and two give us lots of scope to really push it. Coming down to channel three, all three channels are now chained for a much more extreme effect. So we've heard the limit processing a beat, but it's great for processing individual sound as well. So here I have a kick, a snare, and a rim shot going through some filtering and some reverb. These are then being brought together in this mixer. Now doing it individually, it means I can shape the distortion and limiting on each part of this drum beat as opposed to over the whole thing. So let's try and drive this kick. Then I can rebalance the levels on the mixer afterwards. And it's driving that tonal element of this snare, but also bringing up that noise tail as well. And I want that fairly clean. And 
and driving that rim shot through these effects. It's really pulling that reverb out. But again, I can rebalance it afterwards. So the limiter works great just as a simple distortion and a way of adding some saturation and clipping to synth lines. Here my synth lines coming through channel 1, fairly timid at around 9 o'clock on the knob position. Let's turn it up and see how it sounds. Turn that resonance up on the filter. Then turn the res back down. There's plenty of colour if you want it. But it's very soft and subtle with that soft knee on the limiter, so it doesn't just all of a sudden clip. Let's hear that against some effects and a kick. So because we can DC couple the limit, we can also use it with CV. And DC coupling or AC coupling, just a simple way of saying whether it works with sub audio signals or not. The top two channels, AC or DC couple on this switch, and the third one on a jumper at the back of the module. So let's try it out with some envelopes and LFOs. Here's an envelope into the module. Input signal on the green trace on data, blue trace is my output, but I'm currently just patching the input back on itself. So here's just one channel of the limit, and we'll chain these channels for a wider effect later on. If I just make this a little bit bigger, we can see that the shape of the envelopes change, the exponential drop and decay on the green trace, the input, is very different on this blue trace. Almost kind of logarithmic at the top and linear in its kind of more falling lower values. Chaining this to channel 2 for even more limiting. That sound very clipped. So it's a way of reshaping simple envelopes. We can also try this with an LFO. So let's hear the original triangle LFO first. Here's one channel of the limit. And it looks like a kind of clipped sign. It's not kind of linear, and it's triangular original state anymore. It's more curved and almost squared and clipped off at the top. Going on to channel 2, chaining these. It's very much like a rounded square. So with the limit, we can add PWM style effects to any waveform and any input. So my input here is a shark tooth wave found on the Minimoog Model D and this is just an AGH synth oscillator giving us that waveform. But I can mix an LFO with this audio source before it hits the limit. And notice you can see this input now just moving up and down. But when I then start to limit this the output won't go higher or lower like the input is because the limit will just work within minus 5 volts to plus 5 volts range. So as I clip this we get a pulse width modulation style wave shaping. And the depth of that LFO, the amount of LFO mixed externally with this input audio is effectively the depth of PWM like effect. Change the rate of that LFO. And what it's doing is that LFO is pushing 
This waveform into the kind of positive and negative clipping. And as it, the LFO comes up, we get this asymmetrical clipping where it clips positively, and as it comes down, it then clips negatively. And that's this PWM-like effect working to give us, well, pulse wave PWM-like effects over any input wave. We could do it on, say, a triangle wave. So we can see a triangle wave and an LFO mixed on the scope, just kind of bouncing around. But here's that PWM limit wave shaped version of it on our output. Let's add a sequence to our oscillator. Slightly faster LFO. And it very much sounds like PWM and you can think of it like that in your patching. So thanks for checking out these ideas of ways to be creative with a limiter within a Yoro rack system with the DPW Designs L1 Limit Module. Check out other future music modular monthly videos in the playlist on this channel. And thanks for watching.